morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the experts' meeting. We are going to go page by page, as usual. A lawyer linguist, as the name suggests, we're both lawyers and we're linguists. We're lawyers and we have to speak two or three languages very well. So you have any comments on page one? Essentially, we'll be looking through uh, draft laws to ensure that they're coherent and therefore our service really ensures that every language version, once it's been translated, says the same thing. I think either completed or uh, was to complete. That makes sense in English. There is a, a team of four lawyers per linguistic section. There are currently 23 different languages, so there's a large team of, of lawyer linguists. We're formally involved as from the political agreement. And the way it works is the administrator gets in touch with the DQL coordination secretariat, who sets up a team of lawyer linguists to work on a file. Das hier ist der englische Text und hier haben wir die deutsche Version. Aufgabe ist es natürlich, in allen 23 Sprachversionen eine einheitliche Fassung zu haben, die möglichst übereinstimmt. Wir gehen das Dokument Satz für Satz durch, überprüfen noch einmal vollständig die Übersetzung. And then ultimately it all culminates in the experts meeting that we attended today in which delegates are consulted and we just get their, their stamp of approval before it finally then goes to council. The required qualified majority has been reached with all delegations voting in favour. The experts meeting as we call it, or the lawyer linguist meeting as the experts call it, is essentially the last, one of the last stages of our lawyer linguist work. And it's essentially the opportunity to invite delegates um, to discuss all the changes we've suggested to a particular text. In the last sentence, a balance of benefits and disadvantages. Would it be possible to have a balance of advantages and disadvantages there? They might not understand something that is worded ambiguously. Linguistically, it is unclear in English, or the Commission or the Parliament could uh, say something on this. So I think it should relate to both. Sometimes it's a word that might have two different meanings in English and it's unclear which of the two meanings we might be talking about. What kind of pressure is meant? Is it more maybe in the meaning of <coughs> burden or it is some kind of political pressure? Our understanding is that the word pressure means burden here. Ultimately, every language version is considered authentic and therefore every language version should be identical. So it's very important that we receive clarifications from the experts as to what the intention is so that we can then ensure that every language is, is aligned and harmonized. Alors un juriste linguiste peut intervenir à, à différents stades. Il intervient comme conseiller qualité, comme un aide à la rédaction et il assiste les autres administrateurs et fonctionnaires pour veiller à ce que le texte soit de bonne qualité. L'Union européenne est la seule organisation internationale qui adopte des textes qui font foi dans un nombre aussi important de langues. On travaille en 23 langues, on adopte des textes en 23 langues et les textes sont juridiquement contraignants dans 23 langues. Donc c'est un peu ça qui justifie notre euh, notre existence. Thank you very much for this and thank you for the speedy result.